Your goal is to accomplish three tasks. Reducing the Cobalt-3 complex, setting up the ion exchange of Cobalt for H+, and the antitration. Starting with the first step, reduction. You need to have roughly 0.7 to 0.8 grams of green crystals, and add it with 20 milliliters of deionized water, and then pour in 0.4 grams of zinc in the beaker, and then swirl the solution for several minutes. Notice how the color changes from a murky green to dark red. Next, take a 50 milliliter volumetric flask with the funnel and pour in your solution. Make sure the zinc powder in the solution doesn't get into the flask. Wash the leftover zinc in the beaker with deionized water and pour the liquid in the flask. Finally, add deionized water in the flask so the solution reaches the 50 milliliter mark. Now to the second step, ion exchange. This is a diagram of an ion exchange column. Some students find it difficult to set this up in lab, but with a few purifications, it's actually a no-brainer. It consists of a column with a stopcock, cotton or glass wool, the ion exchange resin, and the liquid level. Starting with the glass wool, your lab teacher will give you a wad of glass wool or cotton. Your job is to insert this wad all the way down in the column. An easy way to do this is to use a glass rod to just push it down, making sure it stays in place. You need to make sure it is roughly 2 centimeters long. Adding too little would result in improper filtering, and adding too much would result in having the F1 come out at a rate too slowly. Now with the resin and liquid. Your lab teacher will most likely pour this in your column after the cotton has been added for you. But if you must pour in the resin square yourself, the easiest way to do this is to put a funnel in the column's opening and, adding plenty of water, pour in a collection of the resin into the column. When doing this, make sure the column isn't held vertically, but rather sideways with an angle. Because if you hold the column straight up while pouring, the resin particles will mix with the liquid. Observe that the liquid level is above the resin level. Throughout this entire lab, you need to make sure that this is always above the resin. The next thing you should do is observe if the column has any bubbles. If you see any, cover the opening of the column and just sh gently shake the column until there are no bubbles visible. Once you have this ready, get a ring stand and a distinct clamp instead of a beret holder, which we'll use later, because the column is much, much wider than a beret. Once you have this set up, your job is to check the F1 of the column and make sure it's acidic. To do this, get a waste beaker, open the stopcock, and let a drop or two of the F1 run on some witness paper. The color should be pink, like this. After confirming it's acidic, you need to make the F1 become neutral. To do this, you'll have to add deionized water, a copious amount of that into the column's opening. Some sources will tell you to add 50 milliliters of deionized water, but chances are you'll have to add a lot more. Occasionally, check uh, the pH using a small piece of litmus paper. If the paper stays blue, it's neutral. Now that it's neutral, your next move is to have a pipette and gather 10 milliliters of your solution you made earlier and pour it into the column. When pouring it in the column, be sure to let the solution run down the walls of the column. What you're about to see is a demonstration of the, doing this procedure incorrectly. Instead of letting it run down the walls, the solution here is being poured directly into the resin. Notice how the resin's particles are jumping up and swirling around the liquid. Though doing this may not severely impede your results, it's a technique you should frankly avoid. Have a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask below the column and open the stopcock, letting the F1 get into the flask at around 2 to 3 drops per second. After the liquid level is barely above the resin, start adding 5 to 10 milliliter increments of DI water into the column until the F1 becomes neutral again. The collection in your flask is now ready for titration. Now the third step, titration. Have a clean 50 milliliter burette set up with a ring stand and a burette clamp like this, and fill the burette with NaOH stock solution. Add two to four drops of phenol with the only indicator into your collection. Set the flask onto a stir plate and add a magnetic stir bar in the flask. Turn the plate on and begin releasing the NaOH slowly into the flask. 
you'll soon start noticing pink blotches appearing and fading in the flask. The more NaOH you pour in, the longer you'll see this pink color. You eventually want to end up with a light pink color in the flask. Like this. The collection in the flask here is set next to a white object. Where you can see clearly the distinction in color. From here, note how many milliliters of NaOH was used for titration.